Thank you. That was uh, super. Were you reading from a uh, music sheet there? I noticed you glancing over in the beginning. Oh, uh, no, I wasn't. Okay. Yeah. You read me. Do you read music? Uh, I, I'm learning. So once we got the piano, I started learning again. I, I like learned it a while ago in elementary school when I was uh, learning a few instruments, but then I forgot. But I've been, you know, relearning it. But I haven't figured out how to translate that over to the harmonium yet. So. We had a fellow, he passed away a few years ago, but he, he had a music degree from, a graduate music degree from BYU, and he wrote a book called 108 Melodies of Hare Krishna, and he musically annotated it. But none of us know how to read music, so it's never done us any good. But for someone who reads music, there's 108 different melodies handed to you on a silver platter. So, um, Ishan, Shivan, Vinita, Kapil, do you want to read the verse and purport and comment on it for us? We've got uh, Brent Spencer and Guru Krishna listening or joining us on Facebook. And for, 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 for your information, Brent and Guru were with uh, Kapil uh, Sharma and his wife, Vinita, as well as uh, their sons, Ishan and Shivan. We've got Ras Vilas or Ramesh Goel with us and Sarabhi Pandi. So a tight little group this week. And we're discussing the ninth verse in the third chapter of the first camp of the Srimad Bhagavatam. If you want to follow in, and you can also add to the discussion in the comment section as well. Hare Krishna Puri, thank you. So as we mentioned, we are reading from the first canto, third chapter, verse number nine, <clears throat> that talks about Nar Narendrishi. To ye dharma kala sarge, narna rayan or ishi, mutwa atma ukshama ukte, akrot dusharam tapa. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace Swami Shila Prabhupada Pija. In the fourth incarnation, the Lord became Nara and Narayana, the twin sons of the wife of King Dharma. Thus, he undertook severe and exemplary penances to control the senses. As King Rishabha advised his son, tapasya, or voluntary acceptance of penances for realization of transcendence is the only duty of the human being. It was so done by the Lord himself in an exemplary manner to teach us. The Lord is very kind to the forgetful souls. He therefore comes himself and leaves behind necessary instructions and also sends his good sons as representatives to call all the conditioned souls back to uh, Godhead. Recently, within the memory of everyone, Lord Chaitanya also appeared for the same purpose, to show special mercy to fallen souls of this age of iron industry. The incarnation of Narayana is worshipped still 
at Badri Narayana on the range of the Himalayas. So what can you tell us about Nara Narayan? Very Nara mystical Nara figures. And even today they're said to be doing, they're said people go deep into the Himalayas to visit Badarik Ashram or to said Nara Narayan did their austerities and some say are even doing them to this day. Yes. So Prabhu, there were a lot of myths around Nara Narayan or misinformation I would say. So I just want to accept that I do not know much about Nara Narayana. So I'm also looking forward to hear from the group with an open mind because I had a lot and I think especially at the very outset when we started reading the second chapter, we talked about the fourth verse that goes like this, which I think we use for every before every Bhagavatam class that Narayana Namaskritam Narchevam Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jamuj Kriye. So I think it says a lot uh, about the importance of Nar Narayan Rishi. Initially, I was of the understanding that we are talking about one person, but after reading the purport and even before the class, when I was trying to get some more information, I got to know that these are the twin sons. So we are talking about Nar and Narayana. One of my understanding is when Lord Krishna came, he came, we all know that he is Narayana and Arjun is, is the Nar. So, so that is a, and I think as the Prabhupada mentions uh, in the purport that he is still worshipped as Badri Narayana uh, on the ranges of Himalaya. So most of us who are from India, we know about uh, these four holy places uh, in India. We call them Chardham. Most people, they aspire to do uh, at least one travel and maybe more to these four. And I think Badri Narayana is one of those uh, uh, four holy places. Jagannath Puri, Dwarika, and Rameshwaram are the other three uh, Char Dhams. And I think it's rightly placed from a geographical perspective, Badri Narayan in the north, Rameshwaram in the down south, and then we have Dwarika in the uh, west, and then uh, uh, Jagannath Puri in the east. Uh, and Prabhuji, I think one of the most important pieces as you mentioned uh, uh, at the beginning of the class, is the Lord is very kind to the for forgetful souls and he therefore comes himself and leaves behind necessary instructions. And then Prabhupada gives an example of uh, Lord Chaitanya as well, who came in, in this era to propagate and to advance uh, the chanting of holy names. So he, the biggest, uh, as we were talking about austerity and penance, the biggest obstacles, and there are many, but I think the two that comes to the mind is lack of determination and uh, faith. And yesterday we were reading about, uh, uh, in, uh, we were in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita and we were reading about faith. So faith is not that Krishna can do it. I think the best part of the faith is that he will do it. So it's just a slight difference that can Krishna do it for me versus he will do it for sure. And I think that defines the faith. And for determination, as it also the lack of determination is also one of the obstacles uh, for someone to not perform austerities. And I was uh, listening to a lecture and he said that the best example of determination is uh, rejection to dejections. <laughs> like uh, when you say, okay, I cannot do it or I'm not going to perform this. It's not, it may be impossible for me. It's the notion and it's your willpower that goes and says that, uh, I'm rejecting this dejection. So oh, that is my understanding. There was one more piece that I wrote uh, on, uh, on determination is whenever we perform the austerities or we try to do the, the austerities, we take the sankalpa and the sankalpa is basically the determination and it is the journey towards winning. But I think uh, when I was listening to this lecture, it was a mention that uh, just by having the share understanding or commitment that I'm going to perform is much better than achieving that. Obviously, we all like to win, we all like to achieve, uh, but it says that the best part of winning is the determination to win itself. And I think best part for the austerity is also having the faith and the determination that I'm going to do it and Krishna will help me. So that's my understanding. Wow, that was a ton of really, really, really good researched information. 
I feel definitely that the light has come into me. We'll, we'll, we'll jump over to Saurabhi and Ras Vilas, but while we're focused uh, in your living room, uh, Ishan and Shivan, you want to shed any further light in this area? No, I don't think we have anything to add. I'm sure Raj Vilas does. He, he's been doing some research, I think, using his time very fruitfully. I noticed his head down there in the scripture. So what have you come up with, Raj Vilas? And if Krishna has anything that he's just walked in with too, uh, give it to us. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I was uh, kind of trying to find out some literature on austerity. Um, I mean, in even in um, what is a second chapter, and I think fourth again, second chapter is when uh, Lord Krishna is talking about soul and it's imperishable. There he clearly states that, you know, there was not a time when I was not there. And he specifically mentions there that, uh, you know, Nar and Narayan, we both, we both appeared actually, and we both appear millenniums after millenniums, again and again. So in every yuga, we both appear as Nara and Narayan. So uh, even in Bhagavad Gita, Lord uh, mentions, and Srila Prabhupada um, about uh, austerity, he, uh, he states that uh, a man who uh, is retired from household uh, must practice austerity of the body, mind, and tongue. And that is what we call tapasya also. The entire Varnashram Dharma society is meant for austerity. Without austerity, no human being uh, can uh, liberate. Um, but uh, in scriptures, uh, the Krishna consciousness gives us a very simple path of austerity. Where um, And the, the, the mode of austerity in different yuga, whether when we talk about Sati Yuga, where you know uh, people used to do thousands, thousands of years of uh, austerity and tapasya, and then uh, came uh, uh, Treta Yuga and Dwapar Yuga and, and Kali Yuga. So in, in Kali Yuga, the mode of austerity is very, very simple, which is chanting the holy name. Um, and uh, we have a couple of examples on how just false austerity, where uh, we are not purifying our soul and we are just trying to control our mind just with vast, you know, giving, uh, you know, trouble to the body. There are several examples uh, in, in the literature. We may be lost again. And one of the biggest example is Vishwamitra. He was doing austerity and he was, you know, he was disturbed by Menaka. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, Haridas Thakur, uh, he was just chanting Lord's name. And then local uh, women came to uh, attract him. And in fact, he, converted her into a devotee just by her, but, but just by his presence and by his example. So austerity doesn't mean that we uh, go through penances. Austerity in uh, what Sla Prabhupada described means uh, connection with God, uh, Supreme Personality. We serve him in all possible way. And whatever we do, we do for his own pleasure. That's austerity, you know, defined in Krishna consciousness in Bhagavad Gita. And even uh, Srila Prabhupada states, uh, there's nice verse actually in chap chapter 17, uh, verses 5 and 6, you know, Astra, Avitam, Groham, Tapyatate, Tapo, Ganha, Dambha, Inkara, Samyukta, Kama, Raga, Balavinta. So those who undergo severe austerities and penances, not recommended in the scriptures. Performing them out of pride and egoism, who are impelled by lust and attachment, who are foolish and who torture the material elements of the body as well as the super soul, dwelling within are known as demons. So, as I stated, we should not trouble our super soul, we shouldn't tr trouble our soul. The idea is to enlighten our soul. Uh, and there are other several examples where people do penances and austerity in literature. I mean, look at Ravana and Kumkarna. They all did austerity and they got nice wounds, but uh, their end result was all we know. Uh, they all were finished. Uh, so austerity uh, with lust and attachment versus austerity with detachment. Uh, that is a major difference. And that's what uh, Srila Prabhupada states. You know, we do austerity with detachment in Krishna consciousness. 
Excellent, excellent. Now, um, you have anything to add there, Krishna? Um, um uh, Hare Krishna Roji. So, um, I don't know if this has been spoken about before in this meeting before it came, but I think one thing while I was looking at the verse and the purport was, and something that might be another facet of the entire chapter was about how Krishna, he comes down to incarnations to leave us an example and various types of knowledge, like thus he undertook severe and exemplary. So as an example, penances to control the senses. He obviously doesn't need to control his senses because his senses are spiritual, but he gives us that as an example. Also in the purport, he therefore comes himself and leaves behind necessary instructions. And he also sends his sons as representatives to call the conditioned souls back to Godhead. So I think like in the Ramayana, how Ram gives us an example that he may not be attached to his wife, Krishna himself, but he gives himself as an example, as a man attached to family matters. I think that something this chapter as I was looking through verses behind and forward is how Krishna in various incarnations gives us various examples to follow along with various knowledge. For example, in the next words, it's, he gave an exposition of the creative elements and metaphysics to a Suri Brahmana and so on. So that was just one thing I'd like to add. Well, that was very nice. Very, very learned. Does anybody know the original story uh, about Nara and Ryan? The, 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 um, the conclusion of which Prabhupada says, a confectioner is not attracted by sweets. That, that's the summation of this pastime of Nara and Ryan. That's the conclusion that Prabhupada makes. A confectioner is not attracted by sweets. Does anybody know the, the back line, the story behind that? Well, as far as I remember, uh, Indra always gets uh, insecure whenever anybody's doing a lot of austerities because Indra got to be in the position of power and opulence and let's let's be frank indra's uh gets a lot of sense gratification up there it says uh, uh, uh chitra ketu says that the lord um gives special favor to those who keep in first place but he doesn't always give them material opulence because they get attached and then when they get attached they forget their krishna consciousness and they become envious and full of fear at losing what they've gained. And Indra is a perfect example of that. He's always uh, looking out for anybody who's um, gathering merit through austerities. And so, um, as I recall, when he saw that Nara and Narayan were uh, doing so many austerities, he misinterpreted their motives, um, just like he had with Pritu, that they wanted to take over his position. So what he did was he called all the apsaras, all the beautiful heavenly damsels that uh, live in the um, Nanda Nandana gardens on the heavenly planets. And he sent them to tempt Nara Narayan to try to induce them to give up their austerities and engage in householder life. So what happened was Nara Narayan were not in the least bit disturbed or attracted or aroused by dozens if not hundreds of the most beautiful girls that the heavenly planets had to offer and then the question is 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 asked how is it that they remained dira sober in the face of such beautiful sights the beautiful sounds of the women talking and singing the beautiful fragrances um, the beautiful touch the smooth skin and everything and the answer is that a confectioner is not attracted by sweets. That means that all beauty, Aishwarya, comes from Narayana, it comes from Krishna. So, you know, a, ba a baker every day, he makes sweets for several hours a day. So he doesn't care for sweets because he makes thousands and thousands. So he doesn't care for sweets. He can't be tempted by sweets. So the reason that Narayan could not be tempted was because they're, they're the source of all beautiful women, of all beauty that exists within this created material world. So let me ask you this then. Um, what's, 
You know, we read about, Rasulas told us about a lot of saints and ascetics of yore who did very severe penances. And some of them did it for Krishna. And many of the stories involve people that didn't do it for Krishna. They did it for various reasons, independent of Krishna. Subari Muni was underwater with a fish for hundreds of years. Chayavana was underneath the earth. Sukhani poked him, his eye, with a little straw. Ravana, you mentioned, Hiranyakashipu, and so many others. Um, so, so this is the age of Kali, and obviously we're not capable of doing anything on that level. But what, what, are, what are some of the austerities that we as devotees are recommended to do? And, and are there any examples for that? Number one we just touched upon is our relationship with the opposite um, gender. Anybody want to say anything more about that? It falls under regulative principles, right? This is one of the regulative principles uh, uh, we all follow in uh, Rupanuga Bhakti and in general Bhakti, uh, you know, uh, women. So uh, we, we married, you know, according to regulative principles and then uh, produce progeny only something we can make Krishna conscious. So, um, and then all other women other than wife, we consider them as Matajis. So there's, there shouldn't be any attraction. Just in the form of mother, we worship them, all of them. Yeah, there are a few verses uh, that one has to regulate. It cannot be unrestricted. Unfortunately, you're in a lot of co-ed schools and even from uh, a young age, boys and girls mix together. And that's, uh, that's unfortunate because um, uh, it's, it's important in the early stages of life to when the mind is developing that there not be that attraction to the opposite sex. That's a total distraction. And so the Vedic culture is what? How does the Vedic culture appro approach this problem in education of allowing the mind of the young person to reach its fullest capacity. And even in um, Nectar of Instruction, text one, Vacho Vegam, Mansakro the Vegam, Jiva Vegam, Uthas Pratasa Vegam, Mitan Vegam, Yo Vishyashatriya, Sarvam Appakmam, Prithuam Shashishyate. So this is, uh, you know, this is like one of the qualities of Acharya. And then Acharyas are those who set by an example, which means we, the follower as disciples of our Guru, uh, Srila Prabhupada, in this disciplic succession, we are supposed to follow. And, uh, uh, and these are very nicely uh, you know, mentioned here. A first sober person who can tolerate the urge to speak, so excessive speaking, right, doesn't go good with devotees. Uh, the, the mind's demands, the mind is like, you know, uh, like, uh, difficult to control and, and which our greatest enemy, uncontrolled mind is the greatest enemy. Uh, the urges of tongue, of course, you know, barely and tongue genital. So these are all defined in general. These are broad categories. But when we think about the demands of mind, which means uh, even thinking something nasty, right? Um, uh, so uh, that's why how do we control? It's just not about, hey, I want to go there, but even mind can think uh, you know, anything. So likewise, we are supposed to eat prasada. So yeah, these are broad category, I mean, which are prohibited, actually. And if we abstain ourselves, you know, and that's what the Krishna consciousness is, from these uh, four things, uh, following the regulative principle, that is austerity. Uh, we don't have to penance and trouble our body. Well, let me ask the youngsters here, because they're right in the cauldron. They're right in the fire. Probably your schools are co-ed, if I'm not mistaken. And there's a statement that says, Nevagni, Nevagni, Nevagni Pramada Nama. Agni means fire. Nevagni Pramada. Grita Kumba Samapaman. Grihita means butter. Do you see where I'm going with this? Agni means fire, and Grihita means butter. Nevagni Pramadana, Grita Kumba, Sutama Pira, Anyada Yavarita Kri. So it says, woman is like Agni. And men is like grahita, butter. So what happens when fire and butter, when butter gets too close to fire? Moragni. It melts. It melts. So therefore it says, uh, 
because men have this tendency to melt, to go to pieces and, lo and lose their intelligence and be just become blithering idiots in the face of attractive women. So it says one should uh, restrict, one should um, restrict the uh, associate, it shouldn't be unrestricted, one should restrict the association of men and women, especially in the student years. Um, so how do you guys deal with that in your schools? Are they both co-ed? Yes, yes. Please. So do you have any any techniques? That, do you believe in that? Do you do you think there's merit in that advice to keep some distance? And if so, have you found any ways of being successful in doing that? And of course, uh, you can't be disrespectful. You can't make an announcement to all the girls in your class. I don't want to get to know you. I don't want to talk to you. In fact, this verse, this verse doesn't even prohibit a boy talking to a girl, but it says it should be for important matters only. It should be. It should not be frivolous talk, flirting, batting the eyelashes. It should be for you know academic purposes, homework, something serious. So, how do you guys deal with that? It's a well, yeah, definitely. I think, um, like, at school, like, most of my friends are, like, guys, right? Like, guys hang out with guys, girls hang out with girls. But definitely, like, you know, like, there are, you know, like, larger friend groups where you have both guys and girls. But mostly, like, um, I wouldn't say they're just, like, important purposes. Like, sometimes we do just, like, talk about stupid things like sports or, like, you know, like, things that aren't, like, academic or, you know, like, super integral or important. But I definitely do think that like there is some sort of distance that is kept, but I think that's not just like, I think that's just like a societal thing, right? Like you, like all of my friends, you know, they keep their distances. Like, you know, like we don't always are talking and that kind of stuff. Like we always, I just think like they'll keep their distance and we'll keep our distance. It's not something like I have to do because, you know, like I'm, you know, super religious or even, like even people that aren't religious, Right. They also like keep their distance just because it's a there's like a stigma when you do get too close, like people start talking and then nobody really likes that kind of situation. So what you like, everyone just keeps their distance. At least that's what I've seen. What do you say about it, Krishna? Yeah, I think it's really uh, like a lot like Ashan said. And I also like he said that guys hang out with guys. So I like to surround myself with like people who have similar interests and most of them are boys especially when sports comes in and 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 like when we sit in classes that's the only time a lot of times teachers will assign seatings but then it's like the verse says for important matters when she groups us together for like group projects that's mostly the only interaction like during lunch or like other free times it's mostly I stick around with the same friend group and other people stick around with their friend groups and it's really like, it's interesting because in our middle school, it was like all of the girls would sit on like, it was not, nothing was really set, but all the friend groups that had girls would sit on like one half of the hall and like the other half would be like 75 to 25 boys, girls ratio. And the other half would be the opposite. So that it was, that was something interesting. So I, I definitely do agree with the merit of the verse though. And apparently what you're saying is there for people, who, young boys and girls who um, strive for excellence, and certainly both you two do, and you would get, uh, surround yourself with friends who want to achieve the most they can and get the most out of school, there's an there's a in, intuition, there's an instinct there that, uh, you know, I shouldn't spend my time frivolously in this way. Uh, and the academic years are for another purpose and let me make the most of them. So it seems to me that you, not only you who have a background in Krishna conscious, but your friends also uh, are sort of, uh, you know, intuiting this on a, on a, on a, some sort of a level as well. What about your son, uh, Om? I don't know how old he is, but has, has he ever started a conversation with you or have you ever sought to give him advice in this area, Saravi? Um like he doesn't talk much about and i saw him hanging with the boys but i don't think he's very open to me but he always uh, <laughs> um i i what i say and continuously i tell him 
to be respectful, to be respectful to the woman, to be respectful. That's my one tagline, which I keep doing it over and over and over again. So hopefully one day it will make sense to him, whether it is his own sister or me or any other lady in the, in the world. I think that's the other aspect too of the interaction is if you have respect, if you see women as future wives and they will be the wife of one particular man um, and they will have their own children, then um, you, you'll, you'll be very uh, formal, very formal and very respectful in their association. You won't, uh, you won't spend the time flirting or doing frivolous things. So respect is a big uh, part of it as well. I'm sure Amrita Sundari has some good uh, contributions to make in this area. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Hare Krishna everyone. Thank you for giving the talk last night as well. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah I just ran out of time. <laughs> Didn't realize it was 7.30 already. Um, yeah, I think uh, the point uh, that should be brought and then uh, how we explain, if we see others, not in terms of right now what they can offer me, but who they are and who they will be. You know, whether it's a gender issue or seeing somebody as a resource, you know, human resource. Humans are not resources. Humans are, you know, souls who are to be loved by Krishna. And we have a tendency to treat them like things, you know. What can I get from that person? Or how can I use that person to rise in my sense gratification or even in my spiritual life? Um, it's, it's, it's a pretty... Um, sensitive thing once once you start understanding it and once you have that experience then um then you realize what you've been doing with people all along how you've been treating them um you know i, I really like this line by ramanujacharya he says devotees are not a means to achieve krishna they are your goal to serve devotees is your goal it's they're not your means you know so yeah, and then of course um, the gender thing—it's—it's it's very important. I mean, if if the person naturally has this tendency to respect, even the girls nowadays, I'm more worried about the girls because they're just too fast, and they're immature. But then they grow grow up faster in terms of their hormones and stuff. So it's really scary to raise a girl in today's atmosphere, um, but. I guess if they can get that hint of who they are really and not just limit themselves to them as being the body, then they can carry themselves with dignity. And you know, if, if the parents of the girls can you know, help them see the, who they are, you know, not only, they, they just can't be cool by wearing a short skirt, you know? they're much more than that. And if, if, if the parents can inculcate that then it becomes easier for both genders to see and each see each other as more than mere bodies, you know. Um, yeah. I think the Vedic culture would say to all young people, you you will get married. If you want to get married, you will. I mean, boy is looking for a girl. The whole world um, is basically revolving around that principle. And it's not something that you have to strive for early in life. The early part of your life is meant for developing your mind without distractions, learning good uh, lifelong habits and building your character. So uh, the, in other words, you, if, if, you're, if you're looking at marriage in the future, make yourself the best husband. The, you know, girl, you know, girls are looking you know, for a, an ideal husband. So rather than looking for girls, just look for the way to make yourself the best version of you that you can. And then all the girls will want to marry you. Um, but, but ultimately, we have to leave this body. We have to leave the marriage. We have to leave the family. And the, the, the consciousness in which we leave is called dira. Dira. Komaram yogara dehi shminyata dehi dira stetana boyate. The last 25 years of our life are retired years. And the only way we can be dira in the retired years is if we're dira in the first 25 years. And it's, it's very hard when you're young and all the hormones and the girls are so beautiful and some of them are quite, make themselves very tempting. 
it's it's very hard but if you um, do your diligence and and be respectful and pay your dues when you're young then it'll be mu it'll be easy in the end of life to step away from family and attachments and to face the inevitable uh, time of leaving this body with sobriety and in full Krishna consciousness that will be a uh, that will be passing the test. Ante kale chamameva shmadan mukba kale ya pariyatishwat yati nati atishamsaya. You will know Krishna unequivocally without doubts as a result of sense control. Nobody who's out of control in their senses can ever know Krishna. Krishna himself is the ultimate in sense control and his devotees reflect that quality in him. And so the, the, the trouble that you spend in a youth being respectful and observing formality and distance is going to be your best asset at the end of life. It's the, it's, the, it's the asset which will actually make the difference between coming back again or getting uh, liberation from birth, death, disease, and old age. And if you're a model of that behavior, then you can pass that on to your sons as well and your daughters as well too. So in the Vedic construct, the first 20 to 25 years of your life are celibate and the last 20 to 25 years of your life. You don't have anything to do with women in any intimate sense for more than half of your life. Then when well, you're allowed to get married, you're allowed to raise children, you're allowed to earn income and provide for them. But at the other end, one has to be able to prepare. It says at the end of life, one should prepare for the life that never ends. Ras Vilas has walked into the picture here, so I take it to mean that he has something to say at this point. No, I was listening. I was finishing my brunch, Prabhu. Uh, <clears throat> that's why I disappeared, but I was listening to everything. But the bottom the line is, I think the training um, in today's uh, yoga, the, the training starts from childhood, you know, and it's such a dangerous age. Um, I mean, we were just talking about fire and butter, actually. But the challenge is fire is everywhere nowadays. And the fire is not just in, in the form of women or in a girl. The fire is in the form of many other, you know, lucrative offers, what they call. And that is the challenge. So, so we have to be, you know, <clears throat> conscious and aware about our presence. Um, and that can only happen through, you know, proper training and uh, path of devotion. All, all good things, all created things come from austerities. And how do we know that? What was the original austerity and who was it performed by without which we wouldn't even have this universe? Papa, Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma. What was the story behind that? Yeah, so when Lord Brahma appeared out of the navel lotus and he tried to find his origin, where did he come from, what was his mission? And after searching mainly for so many celestial time period, then he heard the two syllables, tapa, and then he decided to act on it and he concentrated his senses. And after performing his tapa seven, Krishna was pleased with him. Uh, he played the flute, I believe, and through the Gayatri Mantra, he initiated him, gave him the knowledge, gave him Srimad Bhagavatam in the condensed forms, and gave his um, duties and process of performing his duties. Yeah. What two uh, supreme benefits did Lord Brahma get as a result of to performing tapasya? The one obvious, the other one... There's another one other than the obvious one. And the, and the second one is actually even better. Austerity, like not, not Mary. No, actually Brahma had Saraswati and Gayatri, two wives. Knowledge, I mean, I mean he, he got all the knowledge and uh, that, that's why he, you know, uh, <clears throat> then produced those Vedas, all the Vedas. And uh, so the knowledge automatically comes. People uh, think that oh, when I will be knowledgeable, I know things, then I will do austerity. But it is the other way around. When we do austerity for the pleasure of the Lord, uh, our intelligence 
automatically multiplies and we become knowledgeable. So Lord Brahma got the knowledge how to engineer the universe, which was a, an amazing um, profit from having done his austerities. But uh, over and above that, uh, the ability to create the universe, what other um, breakthrough came about as a result of tapasya? Good morning, Good morning. Good morning Govinda. <laughs> What was the second benefit, even greater than the first, I think? Scriptures. Even greater than that. Srimad Bhagavatam. Well, he got, first and foremost, he got the wherewithal to create this material world, this, this universe, not the material world, this universe. And second of all, he got to see the spiritual world, isn't it? Yeah, Brahma Samhita, he sees the Goloka. Chintamani Pakara Sadvashu Kalpavriksha Laksha Bhita Sura Bhya Bhya Palyantam Lakshmi Saha Sad Brahma Sevyamanam Govinam Adi Purusham Aloka Chandakala Sad Vanyamala Bapsi Ratnikaram Pranay Kalapadasham Yam Shaima Sundar Machintaguna Shurupam Govinam Adi Purusham Tamaham Vajami. He got to see all of that. And the point is that Without sense control, nobody can see or enter into the spiritual world. So Ras Vilas cited many examples of demons who practice austerities. In fact, everybody who gets something does it through austerities, isn't it? Even Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu, Ravana, uh, Vritrasura, they all achieve success in their own terms through austerity. A businessman like Kapil, you know, Kapil is our model businessman there. George is in law and uh, Ras Vilas is in academia. Uh, uh, Sarabi's husband is in, in terms of inventiveness and patents. But, but Kapil is right out there in the business world. And now he's got the big shots coming in for the week. And then there, he's going to do a lot of austerities. You know, he's going to go over and above the normal office hours, the normal job description in order to host the people that are coming in from other parts of the company. So anybody, uh, any businessman, even uh, the Olympics are going on. Can you imagine? It's absolutely mind boggling the austerities that they have to do, isn't it? I mean, I mean, it's just unbelievable. I saw some of the trials last night for the 100 meters, the semifinals. And, and, and in some cases, whether you get to compete in the finals or not is decided by one one hundredth of a second. One one hundredth of a second. Yeah, uh, yesterday, one person, Utah, native Newton, um, from Cottonwood High School graduated and he was competing in a 200 meter back flip uh, swimming and he lost by 0.22 second. 0.22 second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, a, a, any anybody who gets anything, whether it's good or bad, whether it's spiritual material, gets it on the basis of discipline. Mm -hmm. Discipline of the mind, discipline of the senses, uh, management, of your of your time it's it's an unavoidable truth it's an unavoidable truth so okay i think we can kind of wind up with this uh point oh let me let me also let me make one other point if you if you don't well i'll make that at the end but uh, okay so we talk about the prachetas we talk about various demons who performed austerities um but but there's one one person in the Bhagavatam who is the the most articulate. You know, if you want to bring out some quotes about the advantages of austerities, you're going to go to this guy inevitably. So who who is this person, and and what are what is there's one very totally famous quote about austerities from him. Does anybody oh. know? I think Rishav Dev having yeah, yes, yes, Rishav Dev, yes, in fifth canto. So what does he say? What's his? I mean, there are many quotes, especially about sense control. Bayam pramatasya vanasupisyad 
yata shahaste sahat sapataha jitenu yashatma rudera guriyashrama kim nukaroti variyam. Talk about demons who do austerities. Rishav says, even if you leave your wife, you leave your family, you leave your palace, you leave your servants, you leave your bank balance, and you go to the forest, there's still no guarantee that you'll be successful because you're living even in the forest. If you don't have sense control, you're living with six co-wives, mm -hmm. including the mine. And they will be trying to make, each one will be competing for your attention, touch, taste, sight, smell, and, uh, and, and, and hearing. And they'll be fighting each other all the time in order to get your undivided ascension. So even if you're a hermit living in the forest, it's no guarantee that you're going to actually achieve sense control. But that's a secondary quote. What's the primary quote? It's something about how he's saying um, the sense gratification is available even to the animals. Kashtan karmanahate vid bujanye. What's a vid and what's the bujan? The worm? No. Good, good guess. The hog? I think, I think you'd have to agree that of all the animals, uh, the hog's probably the best equipped for sense gratification, wouldn't you say it? <laughs> In a horrible it, way. It kind of reminds me of that story about how Indra was cursed to become a hog. <laughs> And then when Brahma tried to bring him back, he was like, wait, look at all my beautiful children. I can't leave them here to go become the king of the heavens. And don't forget his, his wife, the sow, the 300-pound sow. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, so um, Rishav says, Naiham deha deha brajanir, okay, deha deha. You got the human form of life. You've got the rare and valuable Nahum de Heaven and Kashtan Kamana Bid Bujanye. So why should you squander the, the the unique asset of this human form of life to for the same pleasures which are freely available to the hogs and the dogs. Dogs, yeah. yeah. Dogs. Yeah, dogs don't have to take the girls to a movie. They don't have to say sweet words. They don't have to buy them candy. They don't have to buy them flowers. They just have to chase them down. It's basically it. Just <laughs> run faster. You know, that's basically all there's in, involved there. And the, just run and get sense gratification. No decorum, no privacy, no motel rooms, nothing. Just out there in the open, you know, no restrictions whatsoever. That's dog's life. That's hog. Hog is eating stool. Prabhupada said the hog has taste buds that make the stool taste like sandesh. In terms of sense gratification, these guys are blessed, aren't they? They're, they're blessed. You know, so there's a soul that wanted sense gratification and they got the body of a hog or body of a dog and they now they can go for it. See what I'm saying? But... But what is unique about the human form of body, Krishna? What can the human, or Ishan or Shiva, what can the human body do, the human form do, that the animals cannot do? Uh, generate good karma and then you, or also like use their senses to please Krishna instead of, you know, to please yourself. What's the difference between an animal? Sometimes animals, like a lion, may not get to eat for two weeks. Or even deer, if it's a drought, they may have to travel 100 miles to find any green grass or even a pool of water. So those are certainly austerities, but why are they not tapasya? They don't have a choice. Like we have, ah. a, we have the discretion power, like the ability to determine you know, like, do we have the choice, like, okay, we should do a fast today, you know, like Ekadashi, we have the choice to eat grains, but we decide not to, whereas animals, they don't have that choice, right? It's a drought, so that's why they can't drink, or, you know, like, they can't find food, that's why they're not eating. Yeah, whenever Prabhupada talks about tapasya or austerity, he always uses what word to define it? 
choice, discretion. It is voluntarily, voluntarily accepting discomfort for a higher purpose. Voluntarily. That's a difference. Mm -hmm. Certainly animals f feel uh, they have, they're forced to do austerities. They're under the stringent laws of material nature, eating, sleeping, mating, defending. But because it's not voluntary, therefore they don't get any credit for it. They don't get any real measure of sense control. So I wanted to tell you, one, uh, we had a yoga, we used to sponsor the yoga festival. And one year, uh, what's his name? What, what's his name? Atma Tattva? No. He's from New York. Atma. I don't know. We just call him Atma. And he's kind of a psychologist. So he came and he gave a um, seminar on P, what is it called? PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome. So do you know what, you know, soldiers, they get six weeks of training and then they're thrown into a, a war situation and, and they're never the same again. You know, ner nerves are physical things. They're, they're like the electrical circuitry of your body. And so not, nothing, no training that these young kids from Kansas or Nebraska or Utah, no training prepares themselves for the level of violence and ghastliness of war. So what happens is it permanently damages their circuitry. They're never the same again. It's not psychological. It's absolutely electrical and, 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 and has to do with the nervous system. So they knew this in ancient India. They knew this. They knew that you had to, that life will bring certain traumas, certain unexpected situations. We'll be faced with things that we're not equipped to face ultimately death will come which is nothing more traumatic than that but the but you can work you can build up your nervous system you can build it up and how do you build it up in a word how do you build up your nervous system how do you strengthen austerities. it huh austerities austerities but in another sense in a more general sense Something you, something you can apply 20, 30 times a day. Stress. You put yourself in stress. Stress. Yes. What's another word? Un, some, anything uncomfortable. Anything uncomfortable, right? Let, let's say uh, you're, 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 you're late for a meeting and you're, you're trying to walk to get there and you see a piece of trash on the ground. You don't have time to pick it up. You don't want to pick it up. It's somebody else's problem. It's not your problem. Why should I do it? But if you go out of your comfort zone and pick it up and put it in the trash, that's gonna that's going to strengthen your nervous system. Believe it or not, isn't and it? Self satisfaction also. Huh? Self satisfaction. Oftentimes, I have found when you do something for. I mean, even on devotional path or in general for humanity, against your will means you don't want to do it. Let's say you're tired, but you do. At the end, you really feel satisfied and blissful. And the amount of positive energy you get is just miraculous. Yeah, there's an imp inside that wants what it wants and it wants it now. Right. You see. <laughs> Uh, and and we have to we have to beat him up, you know. We can't let him have his way. Like say picking up an old couple to take them to the temple. It's not something you that imp wants to do, but if you agree to go out of your comfort zone and do it, that's going to build your character. That's going to strengthen your nervous system. Maybe you don't want to take a cold shower. Maybe you're not at the level of jumping in a cold shower. But what if you just turn the cold water on at the end, you know, take it in steps, you know, it's going to be different for every person, depending on where they are. But we all need to be 20, 30 times a day, distinguishing between what's comfortable and what's going to be good for us. That's the cutting edge of self-improvement. Exactly. When there's something that you know you should do, 
you really do know you should do it, but you just don't feel like it at the moment. That's the thing that you need to get yourself in the habit of doing. Like I was just leaving church and I didn't really want to talk to this person. And I thought, yeah, but I really should because I haven't talked to them in a while. And I did it. And I mean, that's a very tiny, tiny example, but I think that's, that's, uh, you know, that's the cutting edge of improvement. If you're not doing that and you're always retreating, from those opportunities to do something, well, then you're just kind of getting flabby and you're not really moving forward. It, ha it often happens, you know, like I face the person, you know, is indifferent and it's kind of like kind of negative atmosphere and you keep thinking what happened, why this, that, but at the end, you know, your paramatma, your super soul tells you something and you go and hug the person say, hey, you know, is anything wrong? You know, please let me know, excuse me. And after that, you feel, even if it is not your mistake, but you feel so blissful, actually. Right. And, and what is the term for this? What, if, what do physicians and neurologists call this? And it, it also, incidentally, not only prepares you for the ultimate uh, unexpected violent situation of meeting your own death, but it's also most likely to give you a full life, a full cognition. You're less likely at Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. If you practice what, what, what this, if you practice this, what neuro, neuro, neurologists call it, does anybody know what we're talking about in technical terms? Regeneration. That could be a, a, a byproduct of it, right? But have you ever heard the term neuroplasticity? Oh. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's the crux of what we're talking about. Neuro, neuro means nerves, and plasticity means don't just hide your nerves away underneath 16 levels of insulation. Get out there, you know? Go for a walk when you don't feel like it. You know, drink water when you know you should, but you don't. You know, it, there's 20 to 50 things we can do every day to make each day a forward, progressive movement and adventure. And uh, Govinda Dave said, by way of apology, well, it's just a little thing. Can I tell you, they're all little things. But think, think of Arjuna, get, think of Arjuna being asked by Krishna to fight and kill his teacher and his relatives in a culture where he should be throwing flowers at them. That's his natural training, his lifelong conditioning, throw flowers. So Krishna is all of a sudden saying, kill them. Well, Arjuna being able to break through his last uh, stumbling blocks and do that, is, is the result of a lifetime of austerities, of a lifetime of practice. You don't get there overnight. <laughs> it's simply the culmination of millions and millions of incidents. And of course, in the life of a warrior or military person, that's, that, that's what their life is. You have to expect that. But and we're not asked to do that. We don't have a drill sergeant, you know, getting us out of bed at six in the morning. But we have to be, in a sense, our own drill sergeants. And we have to also look up to our spiritual master as someone who can also guide us progressively to higher and higher levels of, um, ner ner uh, I don't know how you call it, neuroplasticity. <laughs> Does that make sense? So your nervous system more and more becomes your friend in that yeah. endeavor. Yeah. You're training yourself to be able to do the things that you, you might otherwise resist. Exactly. It becomes a habit. And there's no template. There's no one, one template. You know, I, I can't tell you take cold showers because maybe maybe that's not, you know, where, how you're wired. Or maybe, you're, maybe you, you'll get there, but you're... It'd be premature and it'd be counterproductive right now. So everybody has their own situation, uh, their own level of advancement. And I, it's, I mean, it broadly, no illicit sex, no gambling, no intoxication, no meeting, obviously. But beyond that, 
it's up to each each person to challenge yourself in the best ways that you know how. I, I give an example uh, about this, uh, like practical example about this neuro problem. My Guru Maharaj has Parkinson for years. I, I did not know actually. I came to know day before yesterday. And mm -hmm. according to medical science, he shouldn't be walking actually. He has Parkinson for the last 15 years at least. But like day before yesterday, he gave, like he did hour and a half kirtan in Punjabi Bagh near Delhi, and then an hour of Bhagdam class. And if you look at his latest video, he slurs, you know, because that is one of the symptoms of Parkinson, but he gives class. So what I'm saying is conditioning. He has conditioned his, his body that, you know, he just gives classes and he enjoys those. And I was I was in Delhi one time, and um, the first day I was in Delhi, the second day Gopal Krishna Maharaj wasn't there. And then uh, the third day he was doing Mangalarti. And someone said he'd gotten in at like one o'clock in the morning the night before. He got in at one o'clock in the morning and he was up doing, not just attending Mangalarti, but he was doing Mangalarti. And I thought, what mental toughness. How mentally tough. This is a this is a guru. This is a spiritual preceptor. Yeah, I mean, I see him in Boise. I mean, in person, like one one thirty, he's meeting with devotees, and then next day he's at the altar doing arti. <laughs> so, and then all uh, Sri Prabhupada disciples. I mean, how to why to go that far? Look at you, you're seventy five plus, and. And, Wait a uh, minute, I'm 74 minus. <laughs> <laughs> 74, my apologies. You are you are 62, Prabhu, actually. I'm 62 plus, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, still we, you beat us, I mean, in the hard work and everything. So uh, all Sila Prabhupada disciples are empowered, actually. So, and it's amazing. It's amazing. Well, who better exemplifies this whole principle than Prabhupada himself? Um, yet there are a lot of people that uh, in those advanced years, they say, oh, I need eight to 10 hours of sleep. And uh, I mean, he had the, the most rigidly disciplined, uh, in a sense, austere, but in another sense, you know, glorious, completely liberated life. But um, there was no, I mean, there's, you never, I've never heard any story, anyone making a suggestion that he said, nah, I'd rather not. You know, that just wasn't part of his mentality. It's very, I think, amazingly inspiring. You know, I read, uh, and I, uh, all of us read, the, there's so many biographies, Swami in a Strange Land, and you read and you see that movie, the Hare Krishna movie, and you see Prabhupada all alone, an old man with no money in New York City. And and when you when you when you read it or you see it on the screen, it's like it's shocking. It's like how could he how could he stand it? How could he do that? How could he keep despair and depression from the door? And the answer is a lifetime of small choices, a life hundreds of thousands of small choices. He didn't just like jump on a ship to Delhi. He went. He retired. He made a choice to get out of the family life. Then he made a choice to live in the temple and he made a choice to publish back to God and he made a choice to print it. And every one of those little choices took him further and further to where he needed to be. And he, and he, and he got on the boat, you know, one step at a time. He, he got on the boat, you know. <laughs> Krishna gave him the strength he needed each day for that day and the next day for that day. And he didn't stress out about it. He didn't um, become his own worst enemy. He had full control of his mind. His ner nervous system was comp was developed far beyond in terms of his nervous system. He was an Olympian compared to us. And he just took it one step at a time. He didn't overstep it, but he took it progressively one step at a time. And the cumulative effect was he never got depressed. He never retreated. He never lost heart. He always had full faith in his spiritual master. And he 
and and as a result of his vision is is in envisionment and his empowerment we're all here all the temples all the devotees and everything and it was because of his austerities which he did in the interest of krishna consciousness so what he, we can all do this we can all be the same as Prabhupada. But it's not a leap. It's not a jump. It's not an overnight thing. It's every day, the decisions that we make, the little thousands and thousands of little decisions that we make. You do those things favorable to Krishna consciousness and you don't do those things that are not favorable to Krishna consciousness and it's every moment. Exactly. 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 Super. So, anybody want to do kirtan? We certainly got a lot of talented kirtaniyas out there. Do you want to lead kirtan, Shivan? Otherwise, uh, do you think you can lead kirtan? Yeah, he can. Yes. All I've right. seen it. All right. We'll, we'll go with the youngest then. Thank you. 
Good job, Simon. We have, uh, at one point, we had 10 people with us on Facebook, and there's some comments. Vai Bobby was with us today. She says, the local guru trains the children in progressive life, bringing spiritual character into everyday living. That's the advantage of having a local guru, you know, especially for the, for the kids. Very good comment. Beautiful kirtan. Jayashri Radha from Florida, I think, tells Shivan, beautiful kirtan. She also has an extensive uh, comment here, which lists all of the difficulties that Prabhupada went through in order to come to the West and establish Krishna consciousness. She says, we can't imagine uh, what, he, what he went through. Sometimes just hearing about it, you, 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 you know, you, you start to lose, you think if I was in that situation, I'd be in a real danger of losing my mind, you know, like falling apart, you know, having a panic attack, not one panic attack, but 20 panic attacks. But Prabhupada, that's why, he, that's why he's our founder Acharya. <laughs> Priya Krishna Das says, amazing discussion, Hari Bo. And we've also, Sumit Bharat gives us pranams, Vipin Bharadraj, Bhai Bobby, Kusham Demon, Guru Krishnadas, Brent Spencer, Gene Eskelson. You guys all joined us on Facebook. And in case you're not aware, we have at the bottom of the screen here, Govinda Dave. Join us late, but, but with great comments. Surabi, bottom right here. I don't know what orientation you have, but this is what I'm seeing. Ras Vilas and Sundari Priya with their younger child, Krishnam. And up here we have Kapil, Shivan, Ishan, and Benita. So thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. I know that 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, there could be a lot of other things you're doing, but we conquered our minds and we <laughs> <laughs> developed our nervous systems to be all, all be here with each other. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much. I know for me, it was a very revelatory uh, 90 minutes spent. Beautiful kirtan, beautiful discussion, up and up and up and beyond. So thank you very much. I we'll look forward to getting together with you in the future as well. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 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 H